What's going on, everybody? It's Marcus back at it again with... Honestly, it's kind of crazy to say this, and you're going to know this from the title of the video. Um, a deck profile of the strongest, in my opinion, black deck of the game. This deck is absurd. Um, and is should appeal to every high-level player possible. Um... Even in a format where green is good, uh, because or yellow, um, and we'll talk about that uh, later in the breakdown of the deck and its weaknesses, but there are not a lot of weaknesses to this deck, and it has probably some of the strongest, um, just, I, I don't even know what to say, the, the deck is just honestly insane. Um, when I first got the cards for this, um, I was just happy that we had a new black deck and that it could be good. And, um, looking at the cards, I thought to myself, well, um, it looks like it's kind of complicated, complex, um, but we'll see how it goes. And then once I got a grasp on everything the deck does, and there is so much to keep track of, so this is probably going to be a very long video, um... Yeah, needless to say, it blew my mind at how powerful this deck truly is. This deck probably ranks right up there with Old Dark Brawley in terms of strength. Um, and it's better in some regards because while you're not playing 30Ks for free, you're playing a lot of other cards that do similar things they're effectively the same and you put on immense amounts of pressure for little energy while having a mass amount of removal this deck's removal is insane um so enough of me touting about the deck um let's just talk about it and uh get into it because this is going to be a long one anyway so we have a food leader here. Um, it has an activate main, which is already good, which means that I don't have to swing, so I can get my effects going and start up without having to. Um, I can get my effects going without having to worry about whether or not, um, like I went first or second. So activate main, draw one card, add up to one card from your life to your hand. Full stop. So, the deck has self-awakening, and it draws a card. So, that's already, it's already nuts, right? Because we can basically plus two for nothing. We control our awakening, which our awakening is lackluster. It's awaken at four or less, draw two. Which, draw two is actually kind of nuts for the deck, and I'll explain why here in a bit. But, bottom line is, is that full stop, already good, right? So, that that's insane. There's no such thing as getting stalled out. Um, and then... Then look at the top five cards of your deck, place one Black Foo or Cumber in your Z deck, face up, and shuffle your deck. So, immediately contributing to the strategy that we want to use the deck for, the, the opening play for the leader alone is insane, right? Like, turn one, you're plussing and setting up your deck strategy. That's nuts. Draw two when you're at four or less life. And then Fu Hanus Comeback, um, activate main, draw one card, look at the top five cards of your deck, place up to um, one Black Fu Recover card. So same thing as our previous side, but we don't add a card from life to hand, which is fine. And then um, activate battle. And this activate battle is the most insane activate battle on any leader card that has ever been printed. Full stop. Okay, it says if... It's your opponent's turn. Choose with one of your Black Cumber cards in rest mode, then switch the attack to that card. Which means you can never truly commit to a lethal swing as long as that activate battle has not been activated, unless the leader skills are negated, which very few of those kinds of skills even exist in the game. Um... I will get into why this is so busted and broken here in a bit. Um, but first, we need to talk about the Z deck. 
because I feel like before we get into the list, the Z deck is kind of important. So we play two Foos Laboratory. Um, Foos lab, uh, Laboratory states, activate main, choose up to one of your black Foo battle cards with Z stack, then place up to one cumber card from your deck under the chosen card. Just one card for, just card, I'm sorry. At, I'm gonna stop there before I go to the, the next activate battle. So what this does is you get to take the cards that you're placing on top of your Z deck underneath a foo underneath underneath your foo so the foo z battle cards that i'm going to show you here in a second you're going to be able to consistently every turn have access to one of those cumber cards which is busted um, and there's ways for you to get two to three out in a turn so activate battle limit one discard one card from your hand and then remove this card from the game Play up to one Black Cumber card with an energy cost of six from your Z deck. Face up in rest mode with the skills negated for the turn. Why this is so absurd is because if my board is gone and there's still a Z uh, stacked Cumber card in my Z deck, I am still going to be able to activate this activate battle. So just because there's not a Cumber card on the board does not mean that I am out of options to be able to do that. And we play two of this, even though you could probably justify playing only one. We play two of this in case we have to use this against more aggressive decks, and it, it just forces us into a position where we do. It's very rare. It has not come up, so this might be something to consider cutting, or if they have a way to get rid of it. Um, so the bottom line is, these two cards in tandem effectively make an entire attack guaranteed a turn negligible. And depending on what they've committed or what they're attacking with, right, if you know it's the best card they're going to play for the turn and due to your hand size or other negates or anything else, they can't really kill you if, you know, that card is the, that card's the pivotal point of their turn and the crux of their turn then they're kind of screwed, right? They're kind of screwed. Next, um, we play one Foo Assembling the Strong and two uh, Foo Fighting Enthusiast Treatment. So the Foo Assembling the Strong is to give us a Overlord card that simultaneously has a barrier with deflect target. So this gives our Foo Laboratory a secure target because it has barrier to, to use as a filter for our Z deck. Because the cover cards don't care where they're where they're placed under. Does not have to be or does not specify this card. Because this is the card that they made for the deck. So this not only gives us an option in order to filter the Foos Laboratory underneath it. It also gives us an Overlord option to bottom deck our servant cards to draw more cards. Which is insane. Uh, Foo's Fighting and, uh, Enthusiast Treatment. This is one of the most broken cards I've ever seen made for an archetype ever. So it is a Z stack for a Cumber card, um, which means you can just choose a card off the top of your, your top of your Z deck and charge it underneath it. And then this Activate Main Limit 1 is busted because it basically repeats what your leader does. Right, look at the top five cards of your deck, place up to one food or cumber card in your Z deck face up, and then shuffle your deck. This is busted, okay? This is so insane. So let me explain how your awakening turn looks. So going back to the leader, you draw one, filter top five, draw two more cards, draw one, filter top five. So your awakening turn is also draw four off of this. And then uh, foo is another filter to top five, which means, right, you essentially get to straight up search three cards out of your deck, set them up, which is insane for your seven drop, which we'll talk about here in a bit, and consistently have access to whatever cumber cards you want. Um... I, I, I can't say enough about that. Like, like it, it's going to be broken, especially when I explain the play lines and everything here in a little bit. 
But bottom line is that these cards, these three cards, just are so insanely strong, right? This is a card that, by the way, if you have the ability to get rid of it, you get rid of it, right? No matter what, you get rid of it. It's, it's literally that strong. There's no other way around it. You need to get rid of the card. If you don't, it is an extra filter effect for your opponent. And on play, it's going to be a double stack between the Fuse Laboratory and itself. Which means you're going to get two 20k swings with effects that are going to come down for it. Um, you might justify playing a third of the copy of this. I don't know. Uh, what I can say is that I've been wanting to play two of the last two cards. And this is uh, Majibu, Pure Destroyer, to round up our Z deck. Because the card's honestly so busted in, in this deck. Number one, uh, you have a free you are, one of your Cumber cards gets a combo with a 5k for free, which makes this combo really easy. And the amount of combo power you have in your deck is insane. Like, it, like, you'll see what I'm talking about here in a bit. So, that rounds up the Z-Deck. Um, enough gloating about that. But understanding the Z-Deck is pretty monumental when it comes to uh, understanding what the deck is going to do. Now, on to our turn one plays. We have uh, <clears throat> three Fu, uh, a scheme <clears throat> set into motion. Um... And then three Fu making the next move. And then two Mechie Kabura the Dark Ruler. So I'm going to, I, I traded a lot of my collection away. <laughs> Shouts to you, Jacob, if you end up watching this video. Um, but when I, I have more coming in the mail, um, I'm going to bump this to four and I'm going to cut some other cards. Um, oh, I also forgot to talk about this because there's a Fu permanent. Uh, this permanent for this food, just to, just so you know, so I can read all the effects and make sure that you guys understand everything, is that this card during your turn cannot be removed once per turn. So, uh, Charismatic Villain does not hit that card. Um, or other effects that uh, pop on your turn. So, uh, these two cards. they All the foos read the same way. The only exception is their on-play auto. So, there's no point in me reading... Um, all, the, all their effects twice, including the third one that I'm going to show you here in a second. Um, so Fu, uh, a scheme set into motion, what this card does, it has a permanent that says this card cannot attack unless there's a Z extra in your battle area. So unless the Fu laboratory is there, you can't attack. It has an activate main, uh, limit one for one black energy, to take a Clumber card out of your hand, set it face up into your Z deck, and then play this card. And then if you have a foo that's in your face of Z deck, you can add the foo to your hand. Okay, so if you top five search, you whiff on cumber, but you hit a foo, but you have cumbers in your hand, you can then put the cumbers from your hand into your Z deck, play the card. And these two cards, so those two permanents, the permanent and the activate main are the same on all the foos. So they're, I'm not gonna reread them. What this one does is it draws a card and this one top five searches and I believe it adds a foo or a cumber card. Yeah, one black foo or cumber card. Both of these are insane consistency pieces. Um, I would like to play more, but honestly the deck space is so tight with what I want to play. I might make concessions and cut the two six drop cumbers and I'm gonna talk about here in a bit for them. Um, but those two drop cumber, those two six drops would become this. Um, but bottom line is, is that turn one, you're basically going to be able to set up for your Foos Laboratory, again, while also adding consistency to your deck to be able to set up for your Foos Z-Stacks. Um, and then Dark Ruler, uh, Mechie Kabura here, Overlord once per turn, and activate, uh, activate me, but auto when it's played, you draw a card. This has a auto limit one, and this is Overlord once per turn, not limit one, which means that if you have multiples of these and you have multiple cumbers with Servant, which all of your cumbers have Servant or can gain Servant, um, and we'll talk about that here in a bit, you can Overlord and then you play up to one Demon Realm Race uh, token, 5k power. It doesn't gain blocker, but that's not the point. The point is, is that this card is a free 10k draw a card and then draw another card. So it's insane. Um, I would, like I said, I play more of this if I had more, but I currently don't. 
So uh, that's currently where we're at. And you draw so many cards. I have not. I have. I've seen this every single game. Like it's. You go through the deck insanely quickly. Um, next, we play three Supreme, uh, Fu Supreme Intellect. Again, has the same permanent, can't attack without the extra, and the same way you play, play it. But this card is a card that I don't see in any list, really, or I see it at one to two. I am considering bumping this card to four. I'm gonna try it, testing it out at three. Um, but this card is just absolutely absurd for a whole host of reasons. So, number one, your deck does not ever struggle with hand advantage. I have had 18 cards in my hand at one point with this deck. Uh, number two, so, so, and that's important to say because a lot of reasons you'd play this one or this one is so that you can have the, um, you can have the foos, like, advantage of their on play effect. This card says, however, when this card is played, choose up to one of your opponent's battle cards with an energy cost of five or less and send it to the warp. That is actually super busted and low key is something that a lot of people do not consider. The reason that is really broken, especially right now in our game, is a lot of decks love to play a cantrip pass and none of those cantrips generally have barriers. The reason they want to have a cantrip play pass is so that those cards can be charged into the Z energy and then used later to play their Z extra cards or to help facilitate their awaken condition, what have you. This card straight denies that on the opening, which is really, really strong. Um, the, like, again, I can't express how strong that effect is. And then if it, even after that, right, that's not even including, remember this is a turn one, one drop consistency piece from your hand to your your deck and whatever, on top of your Z deck and then getting a Foo back. So this card is basically an interchange for a Foo and to top it off, it is still that removal at any point in the game. So like you have your, like yellow has like the duo or the Vegeta, or whatever. This card just flat removes it, send it to the warp. And that is broken. Five or less is a lot. Like in the new skillless deck, five or less is like their Goku boss monster. So this card has insane potential, and that is not including the fact that there are other ways for you to remove cards. Um, and we'll talk about the game plan and how the board controlled everything. Next, um, a second I'm gonna make sure I have all four copies of these right we play uh, four jet black hostility four overwhelming fight and four thriving in darkness if you if you play this deck and you you look at a lot of lists a lot of lists will play three of this three of this two or three of this it's whatever okay that is a terrible in my opinion, a terrible way to go about deck building when it comes to this deck. This deck is screaming for consistency. You want to see these cards charged into the top of your Z deck. So you either want them in your hand for your foos, or you want them in your deck to be able to see off the top. You'd rather see a Cumber card every time. Your Cumber cards are your pressure pieces. All of them have the same activate main limit one for free to play themselves out from underneath a foozy battle card. That it's for free. It's broken. All these cards are 10k and have servant. And they all have a different auto when either played or attacking. This card, when it is played, your opponent warps a card from their hand. This card, when it's played, it warps a card off the board. Like a, a battle card off the board. This card, when it attacks, you choose a 5k from your drop and use it as a combo. So this is a 25k swing, a 20k swing that warps a card from your hand, and a 20k swing that uh, on play warps a card from your opponent's board. Broken. You know what the difference between these cards and Dark Brawly is? It costs nothing from your drop. The only difference is that it's 10k less. And you will see all of these cards, and I repeat, all of them, easily. Do you know how many top five searches that you have for your deck? It's an obscene amount. 
your deck gets thin very quick, <laughs> which is a kind of a problem if you play against like Mill. But bottom line is, is that you have a lot of pressure. Your, your second turn, if it's set up properly, can have like four swings on it. Like four swings. You tap out, but you have like, like 12 to 15 cards in hand and four swings. And we'll do some test hands and stuff later. Um, yeah. Like when I, when I got the Cumber deck, I wanted, I was hoping for a replacement, uh, for Dark Brawly. This is honestly the closest thing that we've seen since then. And, uh, this might even actually be better because it doesn't have a uh, reliance on activating, uh, mains for like what would now be paying an energy um, and having to use your activate battle to sacrifice a card, you can just combo the cards and, and all that other stuff. Because it's all zero cost 5k. Okay. Uh, on to the next two cards. Um, the new best black card in the game. And it is best played in this deck. Um, this deck is nuts. Okay. So uh, this deck is nuts. This card is nuts. Um, and when I, I want you to pay attention to something. Whenever I've talked about all the activate means to place a card that is Cumber or Foo into your Z deck on top, on top of your Z deck, never once does it ever specify the energy cost. So all these cards can be charged in these two as well. Among all the other Foos and Cumbers that we've seen so far could also be charged in the top of your Z deck. When this card is played, you choose up to one of your opponent's battle cards, ignoring barrier, send it to its owner's warp, and the cost of the card has to equal be equal to or less than the number of cards on top of your Z deck, which is an, an insane amount. The highest I've had is like 12. Like, oh, I played two out. So 10. It was 10 when I played it. Ignoring barrier. There's nothing this card is not going to be able to remove in the game. Just nothing. It has an auto that when it attacks... You can place a cumber or place a card from underneath into your drop and it gains double strike for the turn. And then it has an activate main for one black energy, limit one, to play this card from your hand. And place a card, a cumber card, from your drop underneath it. Bonkers. Okay. This card is also nuts. It has dual attack and overlord limit one. Uh, I'm sorry. It has dual attack limit one and then overlord once per turn. Um, it has an activate main. So what it can do is uh, for two black energy, you uh, play this card down. In your, in your, if your leader is black and your opponent has three or more energy, you play this card from your hand, then play up to one black cumber with an energy cost of seven from your deck or Z drop face up. Okay, so this card can be on top of your Z deck because this card can be charged there or it can be in your drop area and you can play it and then you get the act auto on play, which is not once per turn to warp a card. And then um, it has an activate battle to choose up to one of your black Umber cards and again serve in until the end of your opponent's turn. This is also super insane. Because what this means is that you can give this card, act, activate battle timing, another 10k essentially, making it 35 double strike on its swing, and it warped a card. Um, and then it has Overlord to be able to bottom deck this card or another servant card to the bottom of your deck and draw a card. Just complete bonkers. And that's a lot of pressure. That's 25, 25, and then a 35k swing just off of the, this two energy. Uh, it is a lot of pressure, okay? Um, next, we play two six-drop cumbers, uh, Furious Frenzy, a card that is honestly, in my opinion, worth cutting from the deck. I probably am. It's probably going to be one of the first cards that goes when I get my other Mechie Gaboras. Um, I'm thinking about dropping one of the eight-drop boos, although I'm kind of hesitant to do that because the card's just, like, so broken and good. Um, but Cumber Furious Frenzy, one drop 19k dual attack, um, your opponent has to have a battle card in play and two or more energy, and then, uh, you can choose up one of your opponent's part, battle cards to get the servant for the turn. The reason that's actually just not very good is because just straight up warping the card is better. 
right? This foo right here, this, this foo right here is just outright better than that card. There is no restriction on me having to play this card, number one. And number two, it flat out gets rid of a card. Like, it, I'd rather remove the card from the game, uh, or send it to the warp, sorry, not remove it from the game. I'd rather send it to the warp than have it locked and tapped. There's just no point having it locked and tapped when I could just get rid of the card. So, um, I'm, I'm probably going to end up cutting this card in the end. Um, next, two other flex slots that may be worth cutting. <laughs> As crazy as that is to say, um, and I just might play something a little bit more defensive, like two Bardock the Tenacious, so I think that would break the deck in half if you could um, probably squeeze those in on top of everything else, because the deck is just so naturally defensive, it's nuts. Uh, but Beyond All Limits and SS4 Vegeta, Heat Defying Spirit, uh, we all know this, uh, you Beyond All Limits, grab the Vegeta, and then when it's in play... Uh, you can activate main limo and play it down if your uh, your opponent has three or more energy, and then uh, you get this nice 30k crit that also warps a card. The other thing that's also strong about Heated Fighting Spirit, uh, which may be worth, um, you know, uh, keeping, is let's say they activate the blocker, uh, like a like a blocker negate. Um, you and you've already used the warp cumber activate main limit one to get rid of something else. You can still keep this card back as that overwhelm piece. Um, so yeah, just uh, just food for thought. That I mean, that may again be something you could cut, something you wouldn't. And uh, if I didn't play those two, um, and I know I'm going to an aggro matchup, I'm immediately siding them out for the um. Uh, what's his face? The Bark, the Tenacious. Uh, on our super combos, we play the Vegeta super combo. Um, there's, first off, you can play the second high life if you want to. Uh, there's no incentive to not, but, uh, bottom line is, is that the deck is a hyper defensive deck and Vegeta is the best defensive super combo in the game. So, uh, it's best to play it. Digs you deeper into your deck, um, and can help you find pieces that you're, that you're missing or lacking. Um, next, we play two Hostile Saiyan Encounter. Uh, we play this essentially for the same reason that uh, I was talking about earlier with the Fu Supreme Intellect. There are a lot of battle cards right now that can be hit at activate um, at the combo step for an energy and be removed, and it can be just really powerful. Um, also, when the card is in the drop or in the warp, uh, it is that free battle card negate, which is really, really good. So, um, yeah, it just helps us... Um, uh, you know, secure a defensive state. Uh, next to something that's going to be pretty controversial, um, for support of the Dark Empire. Um, so I have no idea where my other two foils went. I'm like bugging. I, I had four copies of it and, uh, now uh, I don't have four copies of it. Um, but, uh, support of the Dark Empire is a busted card in this deck. Um, your deck has a lot of defensive capabilities already, as it is. Um, and so this might seem a little bit like overkill, but it is seriously not. Um, number one, especially depending on which SCR you play, if you have the Golden Great Ape SCR and that thing lives two turns, your opponent's lost. There's just no way that, that they have, haven't lost the game outside, outside of some insane floodgates and you're just not having anything. Um, but number two, if you don't, this card is also insane um, because of the fact that your deck is such a combo heavy defensive deck. Like you have an absurd amount of cards. Um, like, for example, when they go in for the like Gogeta triple strike attack in the new Gogeta deck, if you haven't used your Fu Activate Battle, you can just redirect that to a Cumber card number one. Uh, but number two, support of the Dark Empire allows us to effectively take our life in a manner from five down to four so that we can defend properly if we've tapped out on turn two. So the other thing that's also insane about your leader is that you do not have to play, uh, pay a life or take a life. Like if you know that the deck's going to be hyper aggressive, like let's like look at Green Gohan, for example, like it's opening Gambit with like the Vegeta. If you didn't leave an energy open for petrification, which obviously we play, um, and we'll get to that in a sec, but, um, if you don't have petrification or you don't have an energy open for it because you've committed and they go into the whole Vegeta line, um, you know, you're going to be kind of hurting for, uh, taking, taking a lot of damage from swings in that turn, right? 
So you can effectively just make it so that, um, you know, support of the Dark Empire is a lot better later against aggression and effectively take from five to four. And that's exactly what you want to do because you don't want to be awakening on your opponent's turn because you miss out on this free ability to activate uh, your leader search and draw, right? And you don't have to take a life. So even if you go down to four, if you properly defended for the turn, you're set. So yeah, just something to consider. And even um, uh, like a, even if you did, for example, do the whole Vegeta, they like just to give you a, if, if you wanted to take life with your leader on the front side, another synergy with a card, Let's say that you're playing against Green Gohan, and I know this is just a niche example against one deck, but um, it, it, it kind of matters when I'm trying to justify playing for support. But um, if you take a life on your first turn, they filter underneath and swing for the Gohan search. They go, You're now at six. You go to five on your next turn. This card's alive, which means the Vegeta crit's going to get stopped. You don't have to worry about that. And then the follow-up is also going to be taken care of. So... Just a niche niche way of uh, explaining that. And having this card as a supporting cast card is insane. Like, it, it's really, really strong in this deck. It's, like, stronger in this deck than most other decks, which is why I want to play uh, four of it. Um, the other thing that I also need to talk about, because uh, I don't play the Great Ape SCR. It's something that I want to get to try just to see how it works. Uh, but the Great Ape SCR says if you're at three or less life, you can remove two cards from the top uh, from your Z deck from the game. And then you can charge the top card of your life uh, uh, deck into your life. So this is just l endlessly looping your ability to play support, which is nuts. Um, it's also kind of translating those cards into draws, <laughs> which is nuts. Uh, to finish up with our extra cards, we play uh, two Super Kamehameha and Petrification. Um, we, we all know what this is for. And then, again, we know what this is for. It's just probably the best negate in the game uh, for black. And then um, the controversial piece, which SCR to play in this deck, this this is the one I have, so this is the one I'm playing. Uh, but it's I don't think it's wrong to play the Great Ape Cumber card. So I'll, I'll talk about, we, we all know what this card does. Uh, I need to talk about the, the Great Ape Cumber card. Number one, it's a Cumber card, so you can charge it face up your Z deck. As an activate battle timing for one energy to come down in rest mode, and while it's in rest mode, you cannot take damage. It also has a permanent that says that if you your opponent would remove it uh, once per turn, you can I think take a life to prevent it from um, being removed, and it's a forty k double, which is a lot. Uh, this card, however, is equally as problematic for a whole host of reasons. And I, I talked about the regeneration effect on the Golden Age Great Cumber card. That's busted. Like, <laughs> the getting life back is insane. Uh, but this card is actually also very busted in this deck because of the amount of pressure that you can put on your opponent in turns 4, 5, and 6. Um, basically, if this card gets your opponent, if you ever get your opponent to 2 life, they've lost the game. Um, because if this card comes down afterwards, it's a 40k swing, and you have... You can literally for, you know, let's say I did two energy for Foo, got a card, got a Z seven drop cumber, and played this card, and then I used my 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 Foo effect, my laboratory effect to place a a cumber underneath a Foo, and um, calculating the swings of those alone. It's two 25k swings, a 35k swing off of your Cumber card, the 40k from this, whatever you played off of this card, and then a 20k from the Cumber and your leader. There, I, you've lost. Like, I, I again, it would have to be some insane floodgate that you could not play through, and I just doubt that that's really going to be the case. So, yeah. Um, moving on, because I wanted to showcase a side for this, and then we'll get into kind of like some play lines and deck breakdown. Uh, four, four of these Demon Realm Soldier Tokens, you actually use a lot of these, especially with the um, Mechi Kabura Dark Ruler. Um, so you do use a lot of them. Um, two Barak the Tenacious. Um, this card's insane. Uh, I, I, I actually kind of want to play it in the deck because if you buy back your turn... Uh, your opponent is probably screwed. They basically have to have a very strong floater, they lose. So, 
Uh, next, three black smoke. Um, I'm playing this for a whole host of reasons at three. Even though it is not a very good card right now, I think it's actually getting a little bit better value, um, more than it ever has. Um, number one, unisons are starting to come back. Just to give you an example of unison effects that are problematic, Vegeta Unison of Fury is a very problematic card. Okay, it needs to be removed. So, it, it, like, you Vegeta Unison of Fury, if you don't know what it does, it basically says your, your opponent cannot attack with cards that are greater than their energy. And we play a lot of six drops and, you know, what have you, right? We play a lot of cards that basically effectively just, yeah, it's problematic, okay? Let's just say it's problematic. Um, we don't play any of the Goku, which a lot of people play Gokus. And the fastest turn we're going to start swinging is with Fu cards at five. But Black Smoke essentially just removes that. And that's also one of the, the good things about playing uh, the Boo is that, like, it can still give us an offensive pressure piece in tandem with our leader to put pressure on. And we don't really need to uh, really worry that much about Vegeta Unison of Fury. Um, but that's a problem. Other problem unisons. Uh, Go Bros. If you have not seen that deck, it draws a crap ton of cards for free all the time. Now, its chain evolution's pretty weak, but um, it has a very, very nasty synergy with the Bardock Paternal Unison. So, basically, what they could do is when they play down Paternal Unison, they activate Leader Effect while they have Freeze a Healing Pot on board to play a one drop and then sack the one drop with the Paternal Unison and make your opponent pitch a card. Plus, every single attack that the Bardock Paternal Unison has is basically like if it's swinging at your leader or whatever um and you go to combo over something once per turn it gets to rip a card it gets to rip a card on a combo so you might as well have not even had that card uh super combo put in the drop right so uh just super duper annoying um and then uh there aren't any problematic cards that you need to remove uh from barrier uh, but if you are going up a he against a heavy hand destruction deck, you can use this to regenerate that. Um, and then all your other like generically good two drop or less unisons, uh, like your Gogeta, the Gogetas of the world, the 1718 uh, teaming up, the, the the whole nine yards, like um, or sibling rivalry, whatever the two drop unison is. You basically have Black Smoke to answer those if they're key pivotal parts of the matchup. And the Gogeta Unison, if I haven't if I haven't mentioned that one already, um, but it's 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 good to have it just so that if your opponent does rely on it, that you can just get rid of the card and, and not be a big deal. Um, two Sun Gohan Changing Histories. Um, so Changing History is super good against Blue, obviously, but this is also another cantrip that we can add into our deck that on turn one we can play. And then, uh, you know, handle our business uh, by getting everything stacked up properly. Um, two, uh, uh, Koitsukai uh, for yellow. Um, I'm debating on whether or not I want to play Ghost Warriors over this instead because, honestly, the my, my, um, my side space is kind of tight. But it's, uh, it's, it's a good card. So um, it helps us with yellow. And then um, Unexpected Turn. Uh, this is for um, blue decks that are going to play Beast Gohan or like Go Bros with their uh, Gohan SCR or what have you. Um, the cards just, it can just break your opponent. Um, uh, also, it would be, it's really strong in the mirror because Cumber does not have Deflect or Evil Saiyan does not have Deflect. So it's not Cumber, but uh, <laughs> Evil Saiyan does not have Deflect, so you can just put it in the drop and say no. Um, and so it, it does have some pretty good th plays. It's good against Golden Frieza. Um, yeah, it's just a whole host of utility with that. Um, Golden Frieza, by the way, can never keep any of its cards on the board. It's, it's insane. Um, to Protector of the People. Um, uh, this is a card that I'm thinking about returning back to. Black doesn't have a lot of good floods right now, but this is definitely probably one of the better ones. We. We're moving away from unisons, which is why Black Smoke is kind of bad. 
And then um, that mainly means that it's a lot of the pressure's coming from battle cards because there's no like triple attack or dual attack leaders like Zamasu or Mechi Gabora. But Mechi Gabora might start seeing play, so this card might become a little bit worse. But um, we can bring it in against those matchups and just mitigate some uh, some some like key swings um, and our you know big power turns. Um, and it has insane synergy with the leader um, because between this card, our supported Dark Empires, and our leader's ability to divert and attack, that's a lot of battle card swings at your leader that are just never going to go through. Um, and then we have one more Petrification, Super Combat Meha, uh, Yellow, and Petrification is just Petrification. Uh, the side, like I said, uh, Ghost Warriors is probably a card that I would like to slot in here. Uh, maybe cut uh, an unexpected turn and maybe one black smoke because three might be a tad excessive and uh, you can kind of uh, you know fiddle around with that but on honestly the side's pretty solid uh, with this and the reasoning I think for all of them especially black smoke like I can't tell you enough if you go against yellow or the new Gogeta deck because the unison of fury does not require your leader to be yellow this is going to like this card is going to be necessary to out that it's going to be so problematic if you don't have it um, and then, um, kind of just, <clears throat> um, moving on to strengths of the deck. So I'm going to do a quick shuffle here and I'm going to demonstrate how stupid, um, this deck can be, uh, just to show you how insane your like life, hand, charge, plays, all of it can be, um, it's it's pretty pretty good on all overall and i don't want to make this video far too long but uh we just doing a random uh random six we will send everything back but this actually we'll keep super combo because you don't get rid of super combo uh the six drop cumber card that we drew is like literally terrible which is one of the reasons i want to get rid of it so um but if you have your Overlord Foo 8 drop and you play that card next to it, it could actually uh, do some damage. So not a terrible opening hand, uh, not too bad at all. Uh, so we'll charge, we gotta set our life. Judge, um, get our life set. I put four there, you can't see it, it's off camera. Um, but to give you an idea of how strong your first turn is, like just a, you're gonna draw a card. You're, you can take a life from your hand, then you top five search, right? One, two, three, four, and five. You can charge a foo. I'm gonna charge this foo. So let me get face up over here in my Z deck so you can see it a little bit. And then you shuffle your deck, okay? I have not looked at all at the two cards that I've, I've lifted. Hopefully one of them's a cumber card because I think I'm hurting for a cumber card right now be really bad for this video if it wasn't ha ah, look there's two cover cards okay so um we're going to again i that was all random so you guys know that I, i'm not juking any of this out so you can play this card for down at card down and then you're going to take a cumber card you're going to want the overwhelming fight in there first over the other one and swap it with this foo and then he comes into play and then does a top five search essentially for a foo or a cumber card you always want to be adding cumber cards we're going to take our seven drop here Okay, add it to hand. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven cards, a 15K swing that's going to come live next turn. And again, uh, in the matchup, in the mirror matchup, if they didn't have um, uh, Supreme Intellect, if it, like if I was going second, um, right, and I had Supreme Intellect, I could get rid of this card so that they can't charge, Z charge it for uh, Fu's Laboratory without taking another card out of their hand, which would be really strong. Um, but then you'll, uh, you'll swing, uh, you, they'll, you'll Z charge this, um, and let's just say that they do one damage, okay, and, um, whatever you go into your next turn is what it is, you charge down, uh, immediately just go ahead and do yourself a solid and drop one of these bad boys for a Foo's Laboratory. Now, I always go, I'm always on the fence. Um, about whether or not I go to Foo's Laboratory or Z Battle Card first. Honestly, it, it's not it's not a, an overwhelming set of importance. 
uh, but it is what it is. So here we're going to be looking for a foo. I'm going to take a life, draw a card, and we're going to look top five. Hopefully we nail a foo here. And we did. And we'll take the eight drop and we'll charge it here. Okay. <clears throat> now, this is where things get a little bit, you know, wonky. What is it that you want to do? Uh, do you want to... Um, do you want to go, do you want to swing, combo a card, and uh, go straight into your, um, your, your guy, your uh, Fuzi battle card, or do you want to play another Fu? You have two options here to do that, right? Um, and you can set up for your next turn, or you can just, you know, wait, and hopefully you can defend yourself with the whole host of cards you now have in your hand. Um, you could also pass here because I have petrification in my hand, leave that energy open. Uh, but let's just say, for example, uh, I wanted to get the Fuzi stack going. So I'm going to swing. I'm going to charge a card, combo card. I'm going to combo this Cumber. Uh, because this card can be played out of the drop with this, it's totally fine that it goes to our Z. And then uh, we got our 15. And then we tap one, do whatever. We play our Fu right here, which Z stacks. Uh, this cumber, okay? And then now um, I'm going to activate his effect um, to charge a card face up into my Z deck. And I got Thriving Darkness. I'm now going to then use Foo's Laboratory, shuffling the deck, to play Thriving Darkness underneath it, because you can do that. So this card Z stacked, and then this card did that, right? And so the, now I can play both of these cards out. And this is going to be a 20k swing that charges, Z charges a card. And this is going to be a 20k swing that I'll play Warped a card. So on your second turn, you swung 25k, in this example, 25k, 20k, 15k. And um, you could have even, uh, if you, it, your foo was gone, but if you had played another foo, you could have used combo, don't do whatever. This is going to be, this foo right here that's on top of your Z deck is going to be then used later um, for whatever. Okay, so let's uh, keep going with the example. Let's say that they, they deal a damage, and now that you're at four or less life, you can either decide to use this draw two to awaken if their pressure is getting a little extreme, but on two energy, there's not a lot of uh, other decks can do. Um like go bros and gohan maybe this deck yes um skillless can so you may have to use a super combo or two um let's uh let's say that we just took the damage and we had to spend a super combo so we're gonna bottom deck a card and then draw two we'll bottom deck this and then draw two cards and then everything else just stayed as was okay your next turn here is insane, okay? So you draw, uh, charge, you can charge this because you're about to add one from your hand. Uh, I'm just gonna straight up play one of these right away. Um, again, I'm gonna take a Cumber card from my hand. This is the card that's in my hand. I'm gonna take it, I'm gonna place it face up, and then I'm gonna swap this, okay? And then I'm gonna top five search. Or a Cumber card. This is the only card or foo that we have, so we're going to add it. So that is a good consistency piece of the deck. Um, so if we wanted it for pressure this turn, we could. Um, following that, I'm going to use my leader's effect. I'm going to draw. So we just drew a card. This card we drew. Here's my deck. I know I'm kind of running out of space here. Going to try to put it in. Um, so we draw, and then uh, top five. Right? Uh, absolutely beautiful. We'll just charge uh, another one of these overwhelming. Uh, actually, we'll go back. We have an overwhelming, right? We'll charge uh, the Jet Black Hostility. And then we will um, shuffle. We draw two. So, and then um, to awaken, and then we'll draw again, and then use our uh, leader's effect. And uh, this time, we'll uh, place this cumber in my Z deck. Sorry, not in my hand. 
Got that a little bit backwards. Okay. Uh, then use Foo's Laboratory Effect to stack a cumber. Uh, you can um, either do this one off of the... Um, Uh, you can do this one, uh, so you can warp a card out of your opponent's hand. You can do the overwhelming fight. So I'm trying to remember if I had activated uh, this one, this Z battle cards. Um, nope, I haven't. Uh, it's probably best if you do that first. Activate the Z battle cards one, and then we have Thriving Darkness. So we have literally all three of the cards I can play out from underneath, which is going to be obscene. Okay, so... Um, we already have Z energy from the last turn. So let's go ahead and uh, spend a Z energy and then we're going to play out because we had two, we comboed this and we comboed something else. Uh, we comboed this off of that and we used a Vegeta super combo. Let's go out and play another one of these guys and then uh, Z stack a cumber card, right? And then we'll use the the uh, Foos effect again, uh, the laboratory, Foos laboratory to play. And then, again, your opponent's going to lose a battle card. They're going to get another card warp from their hand. This is costing us an energy. Let me uh, do, the, do that. Do the plays properly. And then, uh, so we have a 15K, a 20K, a 20K, a 15K. An energy back to defend or to extend if we want. And I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 cards. If I wanted to increase my hand size, let's say that my hand, I'm feeling froggy. And I feel that I'm not going to need this petrification next turn. Going to the third turn, I could even tap this to draw a card. Activate Overlord. Bottom deck this to draw a card. And then um, play out a 5k token. Okay. I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 cards in hand. Plus two 5k combos right here. I can also divert an attack off of my leader, and I have support of the Dark Empire. So this is just to show you a mock tutorial of what you can do in the first few turns, and turn four is going to be insane. We have swung 20, 20, 15, 20, another 20 that was bottom decked, 15 twice. Okay, that is a lot of pressure not applying any combo power. We have a pretty defensively good strategy going into our next turn if we had tapped out here. If they don't get rid of this Mechikabora, it's gonna be a problem. If they don't get rid of the Foos, it's gonna to continue to be a problem. So that is just to showcase how absurd, and sorry a little bit for how the clutter is, but that's what the board looks like. Um, but that is just to show you how absurd this deck can be. Um, and the entire time, we've removed two, two battle cards from this effect uh, twice. Um, the entire time, if we ever wanted to spend an energy to remove another, we had this one in our hand, which is really strong. And then this next turn is going to explode. Like, it, it would, it would, they, like the pressure is going to explode. Um, yeah. And you just raffle stomp your opponent into the ground. I mean, this is a free 20k. Any of your cards become 30. We have this card right here that can stack and, and become pressure next turn. For the record, the number of cards that we have in the Z deck still is 6. And we have 3 ways to stack cards onto our Z deck the next turn. It's honestly insane. So... Um, without further ado, guys, that's going to be it for this video. I, I said it was going to be a long one. Uh, our SCR is still in our deck still. And hey, look at that support of the deck. Dark Empire is in there too. And without basically an equally aggressive strategy that's going to make you spend all these cards in your hand. I mean, you've seen, I've used one super combo already. I got two other super combos. I have a free, I had a free 10K on my board. Like, it, it's just nuts, guys. Like, it can just, it can be a lot, and you can do a lot with this deck, and it feels, it feels a lot like Dark Brawly did with its pressure. So, um, I hope you guys enjoyed um, this deck breakdown, deck profile slash, like, play line of what you can do with the deck. Um, it's honestly insane. <laughs> like, I mean, like I said, I have, like, 16 cards in hand with 
like all uh, an ability to divert an attack plus whatever I have for my um uh my negates in hand. It's it's just it's nuts. And the deck is very, very defensive. Um and you can bait a lot of stuff. And if you had the great ape SCR, because that's a top five search, we never saw Evil Saiyan. I think that is this my deck? Yeah, it's my deck in my life. Um, but if we if we in our somehow next turn got to this card, uh, they're pretty much screwed. They'll be pretty they'll be pretty toast by then. So um, let me know what you guys think about this down in the comment section below. Um, I really, really, really wanted to bring this deck to you guys because it's kind of insane. Like, oh, it's really good. It's just it's just really strong. Um, there's just, it, the, the golden great ape would just be also cherry on top if you could Z charge it. Cause then you for sure are just not going to die, but, um, that does it for this one. I'll see you guys next time. And if you guys want to see more play line breakdowns like this of what decks do, let me know. And, um, we can, but I can do that. No problem. And, uh, I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you in the next one. Laters.